Hello, this is Dread, and in today's video topic, this is going to be a little bit of a different one. So, we're going to be discussing how I got well over 200 plus divines in two days worth of farming. Now, I actually got significantly more than 200 divines, I actually got 250, but the problem is part of my currency is coming through corpses and if you are aware of the current economy corpses are very unstable there are some that are stable like these 20 percent chances for additional crafts but all of the other ones are either hard to sell in bulk or they are just simply unstable so i have been completely ignoring my corpses but for the most part you can see in my stash here i have well over three plus dump tabs of corpses to sell if I wanted to. Now, let's talk about the strat. What are we doing? We are utilizing the keystone called Back to Basics. So the idea with this keystone is we cannot use extra content in our maps and we cannot apply influence to our maps. That means no eater altars, no exarch altars. You can't put abysses beyond, blight, yada, yada, yada. Your maps literally contain no content they only contain monsters now there is actually something that uh this skips and that's mainly the league content so for instance uh you know uh, necropolis so what we can do actually is we can utilize back to basics and abuse it with necropolis since necropolis does not count as what you would call extra content which is very good for us as it gives us something to farm on the side and it is a decent amount of our currency per hour. So yeah, we get for the benefit for deleting content from our maps, we get zero to 80% more explicit modifier effect. This is a multiplier to our already explicit modifier effect. And I put in like 80% like percent, like a, quant maps in like maybe 25 to 30 percent pack size maps and i get well over 60 to 80 to 90 percent pack size and 300 like 200 to 300 to 400 percent quant maps you could go even higher if you went with eight mod maps which i did not go for but you take all of your explicit modifier effect here the more amount then you grab all the extra modifier effect up here extra modifier effect here chiseled perfection stuff like that just grabbing every single percent amount of map modifier effect to get as much quant as possible sure your maps have no quant content but every single map that you run has like at least 200 percent quant and like 60 percent pack size and there's a few things that we can do with that the first thing that we farm are scarabs scarabs are easily farmable when you have this much quant i'm going to pull up all the exile for the rest of this here so as you can tell 91 divines of our profit here, or if we were to swatch the percentage, 37% is of course scarabs. Why is that? Well, we drop a lot of scarabs from all these mobs. The pack size is high, the percent quant is high, and everyone wants scarabs and scarabs are in high demand. Then the next thing that we're actually farming for is bodies, corpses. Why are we farming corpses? So we can go ahead and talk about corpses a little bit more here. So we grab the modifiers down here in the lower left for more anguish and haunted modifiers. Haunted modifiers make it so that you drop more bodies. Uh, then over here, even more unresolved anguish over here, which is even more bodies. Then we make sure that we go for bodies with meta modifiers and modifier tier rating, right? Why am I going for modifier tier rating? instead of only meta modifier why is that well if we look at our uh wealthy exile here you can see that one of the highest uh grossing amounts that we get right now is plus 50 to modifier tier rating we have 229 percent uh 229 of them in all of our dump tabs that's well over 7.5 div now without a shadow of a doubt these will sell that is because Everyone needs these. Everyone needs a bajillion of these. Like you need like 10, 20 per craft or whatever. However much it ends up being. I haven't really messed with the mechanic, but I know for a fact, everyone needs these corpses. So that is why I went with both. Now, of course, if you did not like picking up that many corpses, you can actually delete these nodes, uh, delete these nodes, and then just go mainly for decisive souls so that you get more just meta crafts. Either way works. 
I like the surefire currency of the plus 50 modifier tier rating. But yeah, and the one last thing to note about the corpse farming is we actually grab Fear the Light. That is because it's very easy. So Haunted and Devoted modifiers are applied randomly to packs in your maps, so you can no longer choose it. But monsters in your packs have a 30% chance to have an additional Haunted modifier. Haunted modifiers increase the chance that you drop more corpses. And of course, this is 30% chance to add an extra Haunted modifier, so more corpses. Now, you do not get all flames, but let me tell you, this node is worth it. it it is very powerful. Why is it very powerful? Well, with the normal, with the normal thing, if I clicked activate, I would go into that stupid little screen, and that stupid little screen is another click I have to do. If I'm doing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of maps, I need to click hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times through that little UI, and each map that I do is about two minutes long on average. It's either more or less depending on what's in the map, but for the most part with Dune, it's pretty quick. That means that those are hundreds and hundreds of clicks and thinking that I have to do, while well, this just lets me go, go next. Now, if you wanna spend more time being more meticulous and stuff like that, that works. And you also drop more embers of the all flame, but all flames actually end up being the same kind of thing as like the corpses where they're kind of like a little annoying to sell for the most part in bulk, except for the very big ones, right? So it's just, you know, pick your poison at that point. It's just, in my opinion, I like this node because I can just simply run more maps ignore the modifiers and just go through more maps. Now, of course, you can always take this off and spend more time looking at modifiers. So yeah, that's mainly what we're farming for, but due to the nature of our maps being so essentially uh, juiced up with quant and pack size, we drop a very large amount of sustain through our maps, like I did, I think 144 dunes and I dropped 275 dunes this rotation that almost doubled my map count. What I would do, uh, I would go to Peewee Ninja, look for a map that people are buying in bulk. And then once you fill up this tab worth of your maps, like I have here, change your favorite nodes over here, change your favorite nodes to the map that people want and then just sell those maps in bulk either on tft or on trade and you can sell them for a premium i just went with dunes because i wanted more dunes to run but you can do that with any map just make sure you have a decent amount in the first place and then sell all the excess because other people are doing strategies that don't drop maps but they need a bunch of maps Another reason, uh, another reason why this strat's working out so well is as you get a bunch of quant and pack size in your maps, turns out you drop a lot of T17 maps. As you can tell, we have well over 60 fortress maps in total, and those are 60 casts each. That's actually one of the main reasons why we are going on dunes is because dunes is one of the maps that drops fortresses and fortresses is the preferred choice for T17 farming, mainly because the boss is kind of a pushover. So we have that on our disposal, so we go with dunes. There are a few other maps that drop T17 fortresses, but dunes has an upside. Since we are scaling so much quant and pack size, we drop fortunates like it's nothing. We drop them like it's candy. Without Even without MF, we drop a bunch of fortunates. As you can tell, we dropped 87 and a very uh, decent amount of maps. That's a lot of divines for us, right? Lots of extra fortunates, which is cool, right? Then we also have uh, uh, like fortunates, right? That's why we're mainly farming dunes. Now you could take this strat and farm any other map that you want. I just chose dunes because the fortresses and the fortunates, right? So other things that were very high value, 20% uh, chance to craft an additional item. These go for 1.4 div right now currently. Uh, these are your big ticket when it comes to corpses, right? Then we also get like big value divination scarabs. Those are really good. Ambush scarabs are also a big part. I dropped 166 of them, 7.3 div. Ambush scarab of containment, which is uh, the one div one that like puts everything in boxes. That's really good. Reliquary scarab of division as well. That's like a bunch of extra divines. 
uh, discernment, which are 10 C each, but you, uh, you drop a bunch of them. It's like 10 C each. It's like 600 chaos, which is nice. Uh, 25% increased effect of corpses in this grave row. Those are good too, because those are mandatory for most corpse crafting. So they sell like hotcakes. Harbinger scarabs, of course, people, a lot of people are doing harbinger farms. Anarchy scarabs, because people are doing anarchy farms as well. Orbs of Unmaking, because people are constantly respecting their trees, as they have three of them now, which means they need three times the amount of Orbs of Unmaking. Uh, Harvest Scarab of Doubling. Harvest Scarabs, those are always really good. Uh, Domination Scarab of Teaching, this actually went up while I was farming the strat, because other people were making videos about the Domination strat, which was cool. Anarchy Scarabs, of course, again, I got a large amount of Orbs of Alteration unironically, and that is just because just picking up stacks of 10 whenever I would hit the Devoted modifier. Although, by the way, uh, in all of these maps for the past two days, I hit two Divine Devoted modifiers, and they gave me like five plus Divines each, so that was fun. Um, then the 25% chance of fracture. These are low value, but you get a bunch of them. Uh, B series like Shadowed Crow, those are good. And it keeps going on down and down. Uh, I will be linking a snapshot if you want to look at this in more detail, right? Now, you must be wondering, Dread, what is the money per hour? What is the money per hour with this strat? Well, thankfully, I prepared you a little bit of a kind of like a tutelage here. So I did a test, back to basics, corpse plus scarabs. I used the wealthy exile thing with the strats, right? I had to put the tag of Nico's memory there because there was no other tag. I don't know. Now, if we look at the breakdown of the per hour, 38% of our profits is scarabs, 25% maps, 17% currency, 14% corpses, and then on and on and on. So each cost per hour is like 3.1 div. That's because we're spending a bunch of uh, dunes, spending a bunch of chisels and then scarabs and also orbs of scouring and alchemies the way i roll my maps is i roll them to 80 percent quant after chiseling them and i make sure they're of course with the right modifiers mine are pretty strict currently so i end up using more alchemies than most people do now the revenue per hour here as you can tell most of our revenue per hour on average is through just pure map drops that's why i'm saying that like you should probably go ahead and try to sell that excess sustain to people who are using them then of course t17s i dropped four in one hour that's a lot of t17s i dropped one ambush scare the uh containment which is cool one div orb you actually drop a lot of divination orbs uh, divine orbs uh while doing this strat because you have a bunch of quant and pack size so you end up dropping divines very frequently and of course uh fortunates and then the corpses chaos and all that right and the total per hour was 14 per hour it was a total of 17 per hour but the cost per hour is 3.1 div obviously so 14 divs per hour all the way from two days to 250 div now of course like i said because of the corpses i'm going to call this 200 div but if you were to sit down and sell the corpses you would make significantly more currency right and that's why like most of this is liquid except for the corpses the corpses is the only part of this farm that is not what i would call liquid like the maps are liquid they sell in bulk the uh currency is liquid obviously because it's currency the scarabs sell very easily on tft if you want to sell them in bulk right so most of it is liquid other than the corpses right now let's uh let us talk about just what the map is like for us so we're gonna go and do a map real quick now, of course, I am doing these two minutes per map. Like I'm doing like 30 maps per hour on average, if not more or less, depending on the maps. And I just slam them. As you can tell, I didn't get the UI for the devoted haunted modifiers because I just want to do as many maps as possible per hour. So we're going to do this map real quick and show you what I do. So I do a rotation. I just do like a rotation around the big center here and make sure I'm looking at those. Now to figure out which corpses are worth picking up and which ones aren't, I would just look at the list of all the corpses that I did pick up in my uh, 
in the wealthy exile link and just look at that that will give you a good idea of what i've been prioritizing versus like what you should be prioritizing right now of course you can also use this to farm your own uh corpses as well do 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 do, do, do. i usually just pick up all the scarabs because it's nice to have them in bulk so i just do a big big circle look at that t17 very easy right now i actually ignore the boss on dune for this strat because since we don't have any influence since we're using singular focus with our setup we're not actually uh we're not actually gaining that many maps right for like guardian maps or anything like that so the boss is kind of just not worth your time per se like you could go kill him if you want to it's just like i don't know through my time of playing, it just didn't feel like as though it was worth my time. So I ended up just cutting the boss and it made my maps faster. And I ended up getting more currency per hour because of that. So Gucci, right? Back to basics. Like I said, very simple map. Not too much content. Very easy to run. Like I said, the scarabs I was running, I was running the hunter traders because that's extra packs. I was running two mysterious scarabs, which give you a bunch of barrels in the map you definitely do like want to use adversary scarabs it's just they started going up in price as i was farming this and i wasn't sure if it was worth the investment or not but it seems like as though they are because i did some more preliminary testing it definitely is worth running adversaries it's just it's a little bit more of an extra buy-in than what i was doing so if you want to spend more money, run Adversary Scarabs. Then you have the Magic Bloodline pack one, right? And then that's good for Scarabs, right? You can't really use any other Scarabs, mainly because of Back to Basics. There's not many that you can actually use. So let's talk about the Atlas Tree. Uh, so mainly, we just shoot up here. We grab some blocking nodes. These block nodes will all depend on what strategies people are doing and how much Scarabs cost. So I would look up the Scarab costs and like block the ones that have shitty scarabs grabbing extra scarabs here map effect here more map chance because we want to drop as many maps as possible which means we can sell the excess in bulk grab the haunted stuff here and the, the um, no the unresolved anguish stuff here haunted stuff here and devoted here then we grab even more map sustain back to basics for of course the up to 80 percent more explicit modifier grabbing uh ambush because ambush scarabs are going for very expensive right now same thing with the anarchy scarabs are going for a pretty good penny they're consistent money per hour uh then we, of course more modifier effect more modifier effect more scarab stuff this is what's really nice gives us a bunch of scarab chance based on the rares then we grab all of the map modifier effect as you can tell if you're looking at my tree here oh you also want to grab remarkable relics but as you can tell with my tree here i do not have all my points that's because i'm too lazy to do my invitations it's not like that big of a deal like the only thing you would do with all the extra points is just grab more scarab chance essentially and that would be nice but like it's not a big deal but it would be good it would be like maybe like 60 percent increased scarab chance which would be cool not a big deal though but yeah that's pretty much it the atlas there that will be in the link to below so will be the the wealthy exile with all that being said this has been dread off to go do something else bye